Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. In the description of this video, you can find my compiled link. Through there, you can find ways to support the channel, my other social media, and more. I hope you enjoy this video, and thank you for watching. How's it going, everybody? CJ here, back with another video. We're doing a first thoughts today. This first thoughts is on Joda the Unifier. We got five color commander here. That's a legendary tribal and seems super cool. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is number of legendary creatures you control. So if you play Joda, he's automatically getting plus one plus one because you control one legendary creature being Joda himself. So he's a six six when he enters and just all your creatures just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's super cool. And whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost for the rest of the bottom of your library. So it's just legendary cascade. That's super cool. This card's gonna be sweet. It, there's a lot of really fun things you can do with it. The categories we're gonna be talking about today are first, legendary matters, because this is gonna be a great legendary tribal commander, and a lot of these legendary matters cards will seep into other builds that you're gonna to want to do with Joda. Then we have a Voltron build. There's a cool Voltron build you can do with this with legendary equipment. So that way you just cascade into more equipment, you just get Joda really big, have legendary creatures in the periphery to boost Joda even further and then just smack for commander damage. That seems like a pretty cool build idea. There's also cards that work well when you cast spells from exile. There's a super friend style build to do. There's a shrines deck that you can build with this and then a bunch of one-off cards and in the 99. So let's just hop straight into this. We're going to start with legendary matters cards. First of all, hero's podium. Each legendary creature you control gets plus X plus X for each other legendary creature you control. I mean, just double it up. That seems amazing. Plus, it can dig deep into your library to net you more legendaries, which is cool. So if you have nothing to do, you just dump some mana into it, pull a legendary out, cast it, cascade, and then have fun. Arvod, double lord, seems sweet. Avacyn's Memorial can grant indestructible. You have Kadric, this card's really, really cool. Legend rule doesn't apply. And you, whenever you have a legendary creature enter the battlefield, you can create a token copy of it. It's get taste, act, sacrifice at end of turn. I love that. Bard class seems fantastic for this deck. There's both Sisses, Captain Sisse and Sisse Weather like Captain. Both of those can tutor out whatever legendaries you need. They have Destiny's a nice double anthem. You have Dahada, new Planeswalker, seems perfect for this deck. Drist, along with both the Minsks, are really sweet in this deck because they just give you an extra legendary when they enter. So that just works out really well with the pump effect and any other legendary tribal stuff that you have going on. Ajano is a pretty sweet card for this deck. There's other lands that work really well too, including Shinka and Shizo and Manamo. All of those seem like great includes. Honor Worn Shaku, turn all your legendaries into mana dorks. Seems great. You can do the same thing with Essica. Essica seems like a great card for this deck, plus the bridge is nice. You have Jedit to make tokens. Kamal's Druidic Vow, you can just dump a ton of mana into it and then just drop a million legendary creatures onto the battlefield. Kethis, replay stuff in your graveyard. Kulvori, really cool card here. Loyal Retainers is nice, it can just get you back whatever legendary you need. You have Niambi, which is a pretty cool card, it lets you turn your extra legendaries into card advantage. Petrier's Seal is a mana rock that also lets you untap your legendaries, so if you have a bunch of legendaries that have tap abilities, this way you can use them twice. Pyru is actually really cool for this deck, I didn't realize it, but it's almost like a one-sided board wipe on a big dragon. Love that. Plaza of Heroes is a great land for this deck. You have Primeval's Glorious Rebirth to just pull everything out of your graveyard all at once. I love that card. One thing that I do in my Legend Tribal Matters deck is I use Tunnel Vision and Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. So I cast Tunnel Vision, naming Primeval's Glorious Rebirth, mill until I hit it, that goes to the top of my library. I draw Primeval's Glorious Rebirth, cast it, boom, everything I just milled comes straight into play. I love that synergy, and that seems like a great include for this deck. You have Ratadrabic, which is a pretty cool card because it just, whenever your legendary creatures die, you get a second version of them that's just a 2-2 zombie, which is pretty decent. Reki, just draw all the cards you want. 
You have both the Sakashima, so you can double up on whichever legendary you like best that's in play. Same thing with Spark Double. Search for Glory in time of need can pull out whichever legendaries you really need at the time, along with cards like Thalia's Lancers. Shannid is pretty cool. I like this card. More card draw, plus the Menace is nice. You have Peregrine Dynamo, because you can have a billion legendaries in this deck, so why not copy some triggers or activated abilities? Untadake is a great land to just ramp you into more legendaries. Urza's Ruinous Blast, one-sided board wipe almost. Yoshimaru is going to get pretty big and it's a one mana legend so that works well with Joda's first ability. And it's just one mana to trigger any of your legendary stuff which is pretty good. Joyra is just more card draw. Wrath, play your stuff at instant speed, seems great. And then Thran Temporal Gateway, just lets you cheat stuff into play which seems fantastic. Next, I'm talking about the Voltron build that I thought of for this deck. There's a lot of very good legendary equipment that you can utilize and just cascade from to get more legendary equipment out and just make your Jota really, really big along with all the other creatures on the side of him to boost him up even more to just one-shot people. Some of those cards include Blackblade, uh, Embercleave, Godsend, Hammer of Nazan, all the Coldra stuff, because you have Cauldra complete and you can just do Cauldra in this deck. Lucille, Mask of Grizzlebrand, Shadow Spear, Tenza, Reaver Cleaver, Jite, Unscythe, and Wand of Orcus. All those are pretty cool equipment, all of them being legendary that could put in a lot of work. And if you're gonna go this route, you should run some cards that synergize well with equipment, including cards like Pure Steel Paladin, Fighter Class, Brunor seems pretty sweet in this deck, it's also legendary. Also legendary, you have Dalakos, which you can use to equip stuff with. Zerda, to reduce the costs. Uh, Arden, Cheshiro, Danatha, Gallia, Halvar, all of those seem great. Sram is awesome. Stonehewer Giant can pull out whatever equipment you need. Training Grounds, another cost reducer. And Sigarda's Aid, all that. Seems great. This seems like it actually could be a really cool commander for a Voltron five color deck. You don't see that too often and this might be one of the better ways to go. It's a five color Voltron deck with a legendary sub theme. I think that's sweet. I think it could be a really, really fun and really neat deck. Next we're going to talk about cards that work well when you're casting things from exile because every time you cast a legend, you're going to cast something from exile. You have Faldhorn to make tokens. Passionate Archaeologist to throw some damage around. Wild Magic Sorcerer, add some Cascade. Now Feshni, really cool new card here. Prosper, make treasures. And Vega, draw some extra cards. Now to talk about Super Friends. I think this might be the best five color Super Friends commander we have. Every Planeswalker you have is a legendary spell. So when you cast a Planeswalker, you get to flip until you hit your next legendary spell. That seems awesome. Some of the specific synergies you have are Gideons, because Gideons turn themselves into creatures, so when you activate your Gideon and make it a creature, it boosts all your other creatures up, which seems fantastic. You also have cards like Luxior, which can turn your Planeswalkers into creatures, again buffing your stuff. Atraxa, Proliferate, just seems fantastic. You have Karth, another great legendary card that synergizes really well with Planeswalkers. Same thing with Lazelle and Peer to increase those counters. You have all the Oaths, the Oath, like Oath of Teferi, those cards seem fantastic for this deck. You have Vornclex, just legendary doubling season. Yeah, that seems um, amazing in a deck. You have the Chain Veil, which is legendary, perfect. Cards like Shalai, Myla, Jeru, Narset, Yogmoth, Baird, all those seem so good for this deck. I just wanted to mention the cards that are legendary that synergize well with Super Friends. There's a lot of other cards that work well in the Super Friends deck, but specifically for this style deck, you want to lead heavier towards legendary cards, so I kind of tailored the cards I was going to talk about to those. But there's plenty of other cards like Doubling Season, which I did kind of mention already, that would be fantastic in this deck. Next up we got Shrines. This is another good Shrine Commander, so you have Go Shintai, or you can use Joda because all the shrines are legendary, so every shrine you have cascades, and so you can just keep cascading into more shrines or cards that work well with your shrines. And also, a lot of the shrines are legendary creatures as well, so they give a lot of buffs. That seems pretty great. Some of the cards that synergize well with shrines that are legendary include Sithis and Tuvasa. Both of those are enchantresses that are legendary. You have Xur, which can pull enchantments straight out of your deck. 
Gen and Hana to recur some stuff from your graveyard. Tatsunari seems pretty sweet, plus it creates another legendary creature token, so that buffs up the creatures even more. Estrid and Kallax are two Planeswalkers that seem really good for uh, enchantment style build. All of those seem sweet. This could be a very cool Shrines deck. I don't know if it's better or worse than Goshintai. Probably worse specifically for Shrines, but it's more interesting. I really think this is going to be a great Super Friends deck though. I like this as a Super Friends commander a lot. And the last build I want to mention is just favorite cards. You can just throw in all your favorite legendary creatures and just have a blast. Like there's no there's no reason you need to go as perfect as possible to try to make it as strong as possible. This is the perfect commander to just like jam all of your favorite legends that you haven't had a place to play into one spot and just go nuts with them because they're going to work pretty well together. I love that. That's one of my favorite things about this commander. Now we're on to the one-off cards. Helm of the Host. Who doesn't want more Jodas? Being able to increase the amount you're buffing your creatures. So instead of being plus one, plus one for each legend, it's plus two, plus two, and you get another legend, or plus three, plus three, and you get another legend. That seems great. You have cards that work well with multicolored cards, because a lot of legendary creatures tend to be multicolored. So General Ferris Rockerick, Ryan, Jensen, Urza's Filter, and Tome of the Guild Pack could all put tons of work into a deck like this. The Great Henge just seems fantastic. It's going to be a creature heavy deck most likely unless you go Super Friends or Shrines. Either way, it's going to net you a lot of cards. Then we have some legends that work well with casting your second spell each turn because you're pretty much guaranteed to cast at least two spells each turn because when you cast a legend, you're going to be able to cast another legend. So cards like Elmar, Freya, Jorien, Oji, and the Council of Four can put in tons of work. And lastly, we have In the 99. Any legendary tribal deck that you want to run, this is going to go in it. So if you run Joda, the legendary tribal, you can put Joda in it. If you run Sisse, Weather Like Captain, you can put Joda in it. If you run Essica, put Joda in it. Go Shintai, you can put Joda in it. That doesn't even need to be legendary tribal because all your shrines are legendary, so it's still going to work really well in the deck. Inside of Go Shintai, Joda just becomes, you cast a shrine, you just flip until you hit your next shrine pretty much, which is great. You get two shrines whenever you cast one. Love that. So just any five color legendary deck that you're going to be running, this seems like an auto include. Maybe even inside the Ur Dragon, because a lot of dragons tend to be legendary. That seems like a decent include as well. But that is everything I have for Joda the Unifier. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Peace out, everybody.